Good morning, everyone. Gorgeous day here at the field, uh, roughly 8 a.m., 7.30 actually to be precise. Light wind at the moment, not much happening at the here in the way of weather. We've got some great flying weather currently with some light winds with a top temperature of 29 degrees and a current temperature at 23 degrees. Currently wind speed here is only two kilometers an hour, but that's expected to pick up soon, gusting up to possibly between 20 to 25 kilometers an hour at 100 meters AGL. And today I thought I'd bring out my ZOHD Dart XL, which is in need of a bit of TLC soon. It's showing a bit of uh, bruising now from its landings and yeah, sort of harder landings where the nose is broken. And that's one of the weak points I've found on this craft. So the plan in this flight, I'm just going to be going out for a lovely morning flight just to enjoy the, the day. Uh, we might run through what's uh, in the craft and what plans are with the craft along the flight and just enjoy the beautiful scenery and what the day has to offer. So hop on board guys and I hope you enjoy this flight with me. Alright, I've got 11 satellites. CG is uh, correct. Um. So the auto launch uh, always seems to work on this plane. It's a beautiful plane to take off with. It's currently running INAV 7.1 at the moment. So yeah, it's a shame this uh, place I'm flying from here is probably going to be the last time I get to fly here. As they seem to be doing some earthworks here. And from what I've heard, it's a water treatment plant that they plan to install here. So. I believe the access to this field will be cut off very soon. So like I said, the auto launch in INAV always works quite well with this plane. It's currently running Express LRS and it's using a 10,000 milliamp battery. So what we might do while we head out here over the sugar cane is I'm going to run through what's in this plane and we might even flick through some of the settings that I've, I've got on iNav as well just to keep myself up to date with the way this craft is figured, configured for this flight and um, I mean I don't recommend anyone copy exactly what I've done here do it at your own risk if you want to do that but your plane should be set up exactly how you make it and you learn from your own trials and uh, testing but don't be afraid to ask for advice because I think we're all here to help each other in this great hobby so the FPV footage you're watching this on at the moment is through a run cam hybrid it's about three years old actually this camera it's only used now as just a, a digital video recorder and it's recording in 1080p at 60 frames per second. It can go up to 4K, but I'm only doing 1080p. Uh, it's mounted on the, the canopy, so you do get the odd bit of jello, as you've probably seen at times here, which isn't ideal for the good video, but you know, that's, that's just how it's set up at the moment. So sorry about the jello if it gets, gets in your way. Now this plane has a AKK Alpha 10 video transmitter, 5.8 gigahertz in it, uh, which I recently did a review on some time back. And uh, unfortunately I can't for legality show you a range test or anything like that. Um, and at the same time I haven't been able to record the, the footage coming from the, the VTX at the moment on my goggles due to some issues I'm having there. But the AKK Alpha 10 is a pretty good 
analog VTX. Yeah, I, I mean, in a market where the HD is the new technology, I don't know whether it's what I'd recommend, to be honest, but it, it is good and it has fabulous range. That's all I can tell you. 10 watt is what I, I was running on it. So yeah, you, you will get a long way on 10 watts. You'll even get a long way on the 4 watt Alpha 4 as well. So you're both, both excellent analog VTXs, um, if anyone's still into the analog side of things, but if you're into the high definition, it's very hard to go back to analog picture. I also find the amp drawer is considerably increased with the Alpha series, both the 4 and the 10, uh, due to the weight they are and the extra power that you're going to be using if you're putting it up to its full output. So beware of that if you do look at buying one. It ideally isn't suited for a small craft. It should be on a on something with a fair bit of size to it. So this plane's running a 10 by 6 prop on it. Always run the 10 inch. I preferred the power that it's putting out. Uh, it's running a Sunny Sky 1250kV motor. The original motor I had in this didn't last long, the bearings went in it, and the magnets come off. Uh, I think when I purchased this plane it was the, uh, the one of the first models which had a weakened front nose, and they had issues with the, the motor in those. So mine didn't last that long, so I've replaced it with the Sunny Sky 1250kV motor, which has been excellent, it's more efficient, um, and I wouldn't... I wouldn't recommend any other other at this stage. So the flight controller it's using is a Maytec F722 board. Haven't had any issues with that. It was purchased at least two years ago, possibly longer, from what I remember. And it's, like I said in the start of the video, it's currently running iNav 7.1 and has worked flawless since it's been in the craft many options available to it as well it's a good all-round board so this isn't running the standard ESC that came with it which I think I believe was a 40 amp ESC there was nothing wrong with that but I beefed it up with a 50 amp hobby wing Skywalker can't say I've noticed a huge amount of difference in performance or anything like that but I had it lying around so I thought why not give it a little bit more it's running the 10,000 milliamp ZOHD lithium ion battery pack that you can buy, four cell battery pack. And I believe that puts out 20, or is it 30 amps? I'm not 100% sure, it's somewhere in that range anyway. Currently looking at upgrading all my batteries and building a few batteries myself. I've got some lithium ion 26650 batteries coming and some 18650s as well so I do plan to build a few batteries I might even make some videos on that and learn with me I guess I'm still learning that as well but it's quite a fun part to do with a hobby learning to make your own batteries just be aware of the dangers that are involved and yeah have the safety measures around you just in case So we're going to turn around a section of these mountains here that we're going around. Kind of like it creates a little pocket of swirling wind here, so it gets a little bit rough. The plane likes to bounce a little bit. So we, we turn back around soon and uh, we'll start heading back. What I want to bring through with you guys is I do plan to do a few builds coming up. As our summer starts to come in, it's going to be even harder to fly because of the heat and the humidity. Our wet season will be back again. And on top of that, my flying field now, I need to find a new spot to fly. So that's going to be difficult too. So I'm going to put a few planes forward here and just, I don't know if anyone wants to give us an idea if they've tried them before, let me know what you think of them or even what you want to see built on the channel. Um, just a few planes I want to want to look at building while the heat's here, I think, and uh, before our next winter. So one, one plane I have got my eye on, it all depends whether... Um, I did mention earlier how this uh, Zod Dart XL needs a bit of a rebuild and I'd like to refresh its frame up. It's got a few battle scars. Um, I'm finding it a bit hard to find these, actually. So I will go that route with this plane and look at refreshing it because I do like the Dart XL. It's a great plane. But another option I did have here, I'm um, having a look around, was the Aggressor 
uh, 1.2 meter wingspan plane. It's very similar to the Zod Dart, but bigger. Um, that was one of my options if I was to rebuild the Zod Dart, um, give the aggressor a go instead with the components that are in the Zod Dart. So that's an option um, I'm putting forward, or I may even just do a full build anyway with the aggressor. So that's one option. Anyone out there that's used this plane, let me know what you think of it. It would be highly appreciative. And another one, I thought about getting into a glider, an FPV glider. Um, the Arrows SZD54 came to mind when I was doing a bit of browsing. It's got a two metre wingspan, nice big plane. It's got the front propeller, which would get in the way, I think, of any FPV feed. So I don't know about that. And I don't know how well it will equip the camera and where the best place is to put it. So it's a nice looking plane and um, it's got some pretty good reviews on it too. Yeah, it, it's something I do like the look and design of. I just don't know how well it's going to equip all the FPV gear and that sort of stuff. Um, it's, it hasn't got a, an FPV canopy or anything like that. And even if it did, I think the prop's going to be in the way, which uh, is going to ruin the, the video. But anyway, if just anyone else, again, if you know about that one, if you've flown that one before, um, let me give me your thoughts. It has wheels for landing, so it looks like it's pretty good to land on, on Bitumen Road too. So interesting and it? quite a good-looking plane. Now this one here kind of takes my fancy out of the lot of them so far. Um, it's a similar design to my Zod Drift, only it's a lot bigger. A range of 2,000. It's got a 2,000... I've got a two meter wingspan as well, but it's a lot more capable for an as an FBV plane. It has many options for the cameras and positioning, and I feel like if it's running a high definition FPV system, there could be pretty good space for the cooling side of things on this one as well. So that's I think to the the rearward prop where that is. It makes for a quieter plane. My Zod Drift is very quiet, and I like that. And pretty old plane, this one, they've been been out for a long time, the Ranger 2000. It's got some good good reviews as well from uh, Volantex RC. And then my last option um, is another FX61, as you would have seen in my last video. I lost that. Bad mistake on my iNav setting. Um, lost the plane. I've got all the good setup for that. So I know if I was to rebuild this one again, um, it should fly excellently straight off the Maiden. So I do want to build buy another one of these. I think I probably still will. Uh, it's possible I might get two planes, this one being one of them, and the other, I'm not too sure, possibly the Ranger 2000. But I love the FX61. It was my favourite plane to fly out of my fleet and my first plane that I built. So it's got a bit of a special place here at this home, and I'd like to resurrect it again someday. So let us know what you reckon, guys, out of some of them, or if there's something there. The Swordfish was another one. The Adam RC Swordfish was another option. I think I might even consider a uh, 1.2 metre wingspan. But I'm I'm sort of tending to something that's a, a bigger wingspan than the FX61, which was a 1.5. So, yeah, I'm not too sure which way to go, whether, whether we go something like a Swordfish instead of the FX61 or rebuild the FX61. Uh, they are getting a bit hard to find and a bit hard to find parts for, spare wings, etc., canopy, all that sort of stuff. So the FX61 is an old plane. Keeping that in mind, the Swordfish and your model is a lot more friendly too for the FPV high definition cameras and as such. So give us your ideas guys if you um, got any you can swing past me I'd love to love to have a look. So I'm probably going to start collecting a lot of parts uh, for up and coming builds for the, the summer and uh, we'll do some tutorials again on on the, the builds running iNav and um, piecing everything together. So flying back over the sugarcane fields here not a great deal below other than farms and the old house, a you know, great place to fly. We did venture out towards the mountains there, a pretty remote area actually out that way. Uh, it's Aboriginal community on the other side of those mountains and uh, quite a bit of interesting history going back into there as well with a bit of old folklore. So we're coming back in, we'll leave you there and uh, put a bit of music on, come in for the landing. So hope you enjoyed this video guys, just a bit of a cruise around in the Zod, Zod Dart XL while we consider what the next options are for the channel and what kind of builds I want to get into again next. So there's still other options too with 
some of my planes I, I want to convert over to full HD as well uh, it's quite a bit to do it's just getting the money to do it so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video keep with the hobby and uh, see you in the next one bye for now